We've covered a few different native ad platforms on the Pay Media Pros channel, and you can check out the playlist over there. But today we're going to cover a new option based upon a few requests we've gotten from viewers, and that is Outbrain. While we're not going to go over a full campaign setup, we're going to go over the targeting options that you currently have within Outbrain. We do this because it'll give you a good look into whether some top of funnel interest type categories or remarketing is best suited for your account's goals. And then if you decide it's best for you, you can go ahead and start creating your own account. So let's dive in. I started creating a new campaign within Outbrain and already I've added in a campaign name. I've chosen my campaign objective and I've chosen my creative format. So once those three things are out of the way, we can scroll down to the first option we get for targeting, and that is going to be device. If you're looking up any information in the official Outbrain help sections, they do call the section placement targeting. But you can see the device options are smartphone. And as I start clicking some of the options, you've noticed we're getting numbers showing up within the reach estimator off to the right. And those numbers are going to change as I start selecting or maybe deselecting certain options throughout this video. But after smartphone, you can see there's tablet. And when I select tablet, smartphone doesn't go away. So we can combine some of these devices together. But if I go over and try to choose desktop at the same time, there we get a notification pop up. Here, Outbrain is recommending that you run separate campaigns for mobile and desktop. That is because they see a big difference in CPCs. And this is something we may have called out in other videos. The first one that pops in my head is Quora, because there are channels like Outbrain and Quora where the two device types do perform completely different, not only in performance, but also competition. So the CPCs that are required for each of the devices are completely different. Well, we can leave this up to you, whether you don't see a difference or you just wanna be more efficient with your time that is totally your call, but this is one recommendation from Outbrain I definitely agree with to separate your campaigns by some of the devices. But just to move on, I'm going to uncheck these options and just stick with smartphone. Underneath the device options, we can get a little bit more specific on the device targeting or our placement targeting. So I'm going to scroll down a little bit and go back up and click on the link for operating system, browser, and Wi-Fi targeting. If I go down to the search bar, I'm going to expand the options for browsers and operating systems. You see there are only four options for operating systems, Android, iOS, Mac OS, and Windows. If I scroll down all the way to see browsers, there are nine options for browsers and I'm not gonna read all of them. So you can go ahead and choose whichever ones you want, make your combination. So maybe I only want iOS devices. And there we saw the reach estimator change. Now this type of selection could be beneficial for anyone who chooses the campaign objective of app installs. Because up above, I chose smartphones, now I'm just honing in on the iOS operating system. So then once we get to the ad creative portion, I can really tailor my message and my creative to talk about just iPhone users. And then if it makes sense, create different campaigns for all the other operating systems where you have an app available. If I want to remove something, I can either click X here, over to the right, or if you want to get rid of all of the deeper operating systems and browser options you selected, you can just click clear all. And the reach estimator went all the way back up. And then underneath that search bar, we see the option for Wi-Fi targeting. You have the option to only target people when they are connected to Wi-Fi. This may make sense if the creative format you have chosen is for the clip ad format. This ad format has movement, so you can upload a GIF or an MP4, some sort of movement. And if you want the best user experience while they're looking at your ad with motion, you want to make sure it's playing properly. So making sure your users have the best connection with Wi-Fi might be more appealing to you. Or if you're also doing the app install campaigns, people like to make sure that they're on Wi-Fi when they're downloading apps. It makes the process smoother and it can guarantee a higher download rate for your campaigns. I believe the Wi-Fi option is only available for mobile devices, but if you really don't care about that, you do have the option to turn it off. Next we see down below is about budget and bidding. I'm going to leave it as the default because those aren't targeting options. Then there's the ad schedule. And here we get down to the next targeting option, which is going to be location. We see the default option is worldwide, but you can click on the search bar and start typing in specific locations. In Outbrain, you can target by country, region, or state, DMA, or zip code. Showing my age with this location, but I want to show you how specific we can get. If I select this option, just one zip code, we see that my reach definitely went down. But if I go in and add in a different location, here we see an option of DMA, not as specific as just a city level. We can layer on different levels of location targeting. And if I click out of this, I'm actually going to go back up and broaden my targeting option really quick. One second. Since I'm now adding a country level, 
which will cover the two other location options I just added. It's going to replace those options and I'm good with that. And I wanted to do that for a reason. So then when we get to the point of where we can add location exclusions, you can add the region, the DMA, and the zip code as your exclusions to make it as specific as possible. If you want to target or exclude many locations at one time, you can upload a template. If I go back up a little bit, you'll see a bulk upload option. It'll give you the option to bulk upload inclusions, bulk upload exclusions, export the information if you want to make any changes to your campaign after it goes live, or if this is brand new to you, you can download the template. I'm not actually going to download it, but you can see in the note right here what you would need in the template. Outbrain states that you can upload up to 7,000 postal codes or zip codes to one campaign. Cancel out of this. And then we can scroll down to the next section, which is going to be audience targeting. Now, before you even consider audience targeting, you have to have the Outbrain pixel set up on your website or your landing pages and then have an audience created. So to do that, we're going to head into audiences. It's this logo with the people at the top. And we already have an audience created. I just created one right before I started recording this video. So that's what we see. There's nobody here because it's just starting to collect. When you first create your Outbrain account and you go to the audience section, you're not going to see the specific view. It's pretty much going to have a pop-up with the Outbrain pixel and encourage you to install it. You need it to be installed before you can even create an audience. It pretty much will look like this if I click on the Outbrain pixel button. This is what you're going to see. So the easiest way to install it is with Google Tag Manager. So let me go up and open up that screen. In Tag Manager, I already opened up a new tag. I already added the All Pages trigger. So when we're going into Tag Configuration, you're not going to find Outbrain if you start scrolling down or if you go up to the search function. What you need to do is go into the Community Template Gallery. Now we can go up to the search bar, type in Outbrain, and there choose the pixel. Now we'll want to choose the template. And then here we need to add in our marketer ID. And by that, we need to look for the Outbrain ID line. And I highlighted a specific part of the marketer ID because when we go back into Outbrain and look at the pixel, we need to highlight the entire string of characters that come after this section I have highlighted right here. So let's go back to the pixel. You see, if I hover my mouse over, it's gonna have me copy the entire thing. So sometimes I'll do that, paste it into a notepad, and the part that you need to copy is actually the only part I have blurred out on the screen. That long string of lime green characters, that's what you'll need to copy. Go back into your tag manager, paste it in here, it's definitely not what it looks like, and then you would save it and publish your tag. Once that is done, go back into Outbrain. I'm gonna close out of this, and then you'll be able to go and add an audience. From here, I can create a new one. Now you can name your audience, the duration between one and 180 days, and then you can choose which type of audience. The easiest one, is going to be audience targeting. This one will include URLs that are part of the website where you have your Outbrain pixel. So I can do something like URL contains, and this is pretty much the one audience I already created. The other options are going to be after you have campaigns running for a while. So in story sequencing audiences, it could be people who clicked or viewed specific campaigns that you already have created. I can't show you because this is a demo account we created just for this video. Can't use a client account, but you'd be able to choose it from the drop down here. Next, you can create a converter segment. Once you set up conversion tracking in Outbrain, you'll be able to create audiences from those conversion actions. If it's a top level conversion action, you may use that as a targeting option to get users to the next step of whatever you want them to do. On the flip side, maybe you wanna create an audience off of the deepest action a user has performed. Maybe they just recently purchased something from your website, you don't wanna bother them with ads, use it as an exclusion. And the same thing for value-based converters. This is pretty much going to be for the e-commerce accounts where you can attach a dollar amount to a specific conversion action like a purchase. So you can use that as a targeting to upsell or an exclusion to not bother people after they've recently purchased something. I'm not going to save anything because I already have one audience created. And then we can hop back into our campaigns. I'm going to try to add a campaign again, hopefully get back to where I'm going. And let's continue to where we left off. So we can see from including audiences, I can add the one I created. Or if I want to stick to just new awareness and reach, I can choose to exclude all visitors to my website. And that way, my Outbrain campaigns will be focused on getting in front of people who may not be familiar with my brand. Scrolling down again, we're going to get to interest and attributes. If I move up, so this will include first party data and how consumers have engaged with content from Outbrain. So if we look for certain interests, we see there aren't a ton of categories, but some of them do break down further like autos, 
I'm not going to do every single one. Let's click on entertainment. There's sports. All the main sports are there. Technology and internet. Here, let's do social media. And there we see a variety of things. There's travel down below. And I skipped a few other options. But what we see it is higher level. Even if we go to attributes, there are different options here. Now I said interest uses first party data. Attributes will use third party data. And if you choose attributes, Outbrain is gonna add a third party data fee on top of your CPC. So understand this will be a more expensive option. However, and I'm choosing B2B because that's what Michelle and I do a lot of. If we scroll down on some of these options, you could potentially find an audience that's more suited for what you're looking for. I clicked on a few options. Let me go down to company size. Let's just do extra large. And if I highlight over that one, it gives us a description on where the third party data is coming from, what's included within this option. So companies with 5,000 plus employees, and then it's showing me the additional cost per click if I select this attribute. And not only the warning here, it's letting me know at the bottom of my campaign that the additional charges are coming. So there's no way you could say it's a surprise. They've warned you multiple times. But adding all this stuff, I see that my audience is getting pretty low, so maybe I wanna just remove social media. And then next is going to be contextual targeting. Contextual targeting is going to be where the user is viewing the ad. So for example, I see Outbrain ads all the time on CNN. So if I click on the category of contextual targeting, maybe I will just wanna scroll down and click on news sites. And most likely CNN will fall under this international news option. So again, contextual targeting is where the user is viewing the Outbrain ad. What type of content are they looking at at the moment? Do you feel it has an impact based on the ad that you're gonna show them? If so, you can add this contextual targeting layer to your campaign. Just so we can see more of the categories, let me scroll down a little bit. A lot of them mimic some of the interest categories that we were looking at before. And then we see all of them break down into deeper categories. And besides clicking on all the drop downs, you can also search for specific categories if you have one in mind already. I'm not gonna choose anything specific because there's gonna be many different types of industries watching this video. So just go in and search for it yourself. But whether you're doing interest targeting or contextual targeting, you can see we can add these as an and option, meaning including them or excluding these options. For example, in this particular attribute, I was targeting extra large companies. There was an option for small businesses. So if I don't wanna get in front of small businesses, I can exclude that option if I'd like to. Same thing with contextual targeting. We see the and and exclude options. If I'm trying to keep it more professional and I don't wanna show up on the celebrity gossip sites, try to find those options where you think it makes sense to not be on those specific types of websites where the content doesn't really apply to your audience, or they might not be in the mindset to view your product or whatever you're promoting in front of them. And then the final section for targeting options in Outbrain will be advanced placements and targeting. The first one's pretty straightforward. If you wanna target just on MSN, Microsoft News, and going over to the information circle, this one is important to know if this does sound appealing, is that they have their own advertising guidelines, so you can click on the learn more link to learn what those are if targeting MSN exclusively seems like something you'd wanna do. The next option is looking after high impact placements. You see right there, it requires a minimum CPC of $1. So I'd have to scroll back up to the budget section and change my CPC. I left it as the default, I don't remember what it was. High impact will only serve in the smart feed and in article placements. And describing this even further, they're always shown as a single unit. Your ads will not appear next to other advertisers running Outbrain ads. So you may see that when you see a block of Outbrain ads, there could be like four to six ads all competing for like a similar block of space on a website. Well, high impact will only show your ad in the smart feed or in article spaces. That's why the CPC is higher and has a minimum of $1 because you're taking the entire spot. You're pushing out the competition. You're gaining all the eyeballs for that placement. If your focus is on massive reach, you probably do not want to select this option. It's something for you to consider. Next, we can choose to exclude ad block users, probably appealing for anyone who has ad block software on their device. Outbrain will admit that they can't detect every single person that has an ad blocker on. So it's not gonna be 100%, but anything is better than nothing. And the last option, a different form of retargeting that we didn't talk about in the audience section is dynamic retargeting. This is gonna be the best option for any e-commerce brands that have larger product feeds. Someone visits your website, looks at a specific product, they could see that product on any of the placements that are part of the Outbrain network. 
If you're interested in setting that up, you want to get a feed in place, then you can go over to this little target and arrow, click on dynamic retargeting, and that'll have all the instructions for you to set it up. But those are the main targeting options for an Outbrain campaign. You can see how some of the options may be best suited for certain campaign objectives, but you can also see how Outbrain can be useful if you want to just do some simple retargeting to people who have already interacted with your brand before. It's free to sign up for the self serve program and start exploring the targeting options that they have if you are looking at boosting your awareness or potentially driving more traffic or conversions. Hopefully in a later video, we can talk more about conversion tracking and all the different campaign objectives. But for now, it's just a good idea to review who you can potentially get in front of with Outbrain before you set up a campaign. If you have any questions on Outbrain, even outside the targeting options we talked about in this video, let us know in the comments below. Thanks for watching our video. If you found it useful, give us a thumbs up below. We release a new video at least once a week, so if you want to see more from the Paid Media Pros channel, be sure to subscribe.